Hey folks, this is Kalani. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where your weekly box just doesn't seem to understand your current gearing needs? Maybe you need a new weapon, but oh no, that shiny golden box for some reason just keeps giving you pants after pants after pants. It's like the game thinks you're running around butt naked all the time telling you to cover up your Zandalari golden jewels, and I mean... I'm not going to judge you if you are, but getting a piece of gear out of the weekly box that gets immediately sharded or vended feels quite disappointing. You waited all week for that box, you pushed yourself through another Mythic Plus 15 just to make sure you had the best chances of getting something decent, but nope just another pair of pants. This situation is never going to happen in Shadowlands. There are some massive changes coming to the weekly reward system in the next expansion, and we have our first glimpse of how that might all play out. Okay, this is the new weekly reward screen in the current beta build. Obviously, this is all still a work in progress, so values, numbers, even requirements could change, but it gives us an idea of what the dev team is thinking about and what their current plans are going forward. As you can see, we have a lot of options, both for how to earn a piece of loot in the new weekly vault and to add additional choices for us to pick from. We have three distinct rows of activities, one for race, one for dungeons and one for PvP, and then we have three different tiers of progression unlocks for each type of content. If you complete the requirements for one of the options here, you will add another choice into your weekly vault. If you're able to do absolutely everything on this list, then that means you get a choice between nine different items when you open your weekly box. So that's more or less getting to open nine weekly caches as they are in Battle for Azeroth right now, and you get to pick which item you want to walk away with. We're not too sure if you're going to be given the actual item as a choice or if it's just going to say trinket versus pants versus weapon, but either way it works out, you can pick and choose which type of reward you want to best suit your current gearing needs. If you don't need pants and you complete two objectives here to give you two options and one of those options ends up being a pair of pants, just don't pick that option. Boom. Useful weekly loot. The more content you get done, the more items you add to the box, the more likely you're going to actually get something you can use. So let's take a look at how you can currently earn these pieces of gear. The top row will reward you for taking part in raids, as you might expect. If you kill three raid bosses in Shadowlands, you'll earn one piece of loot, or one choice or option, in your weekly vault. If you kill another four bosses for a total of seven, that's another piece of loot. And if you get up to ten bosses killed in a week, then you'll earn all three choices in the raid row. This will be very interesting to keep track of because there are only ten bosses in the first raid. They will be all available on normal and heroic right away, but look Looking for raid tends to take a couple of weeks to unlock everything. That means if you don't raid normal and only take part in raids in LFR, you're going to have to wait quite a while before you can unlock all three items by killing all ten bosses in LFR. I will also be very interested to see how boss kills add up too. Can you kill the same boss over and over to get up to 10 kills total? Can you mix and match between difficulties, so 6 normal bosses and 4 heroic bosses equals 10 total kills? Or does each boss only count towards this counter once regardless of difficulty? There are a lot of questions to answer here, but for the most part, if you can full clear the raid, you should have 3 pieces of gear to pick from in your weekly vault without doing any other time type of content. That means if you just want to raid, raid, and nothing but raid, you actually won't have to step into Mythic Plus Dungeons just to get your weekly loot anymore. You can get more choices or options if you do some dungeons, but it's not required to get your big weekly upgrade. Just raiding alone can provide you with three times what the weekly box in BFA was worth, which is a fantastic change in my opinion. The next row down is for Mythic Dungeons. It does specify Mythic, so I guess Normal and Heroic Dungeons won't count for anything towards this progression line. The first piece of loot is unlocked for doing one Mythic Dungeon, so there's your once a week key right there. The second piece loot jumps up to five dungeons, and then the third and final dungeon piece comes from clearing 15 Mythic Dungeons. That is a big jump at the end, and will probably be the most time consuming part of this entire reward package. 
But bear in mind that you do not have to go after all nine. You can do some raid bosses, do a couple mythic dungeons, and maybe a spot of PvP, and walk away with at least three options in your weekly cache. That's still three times better than the current system we have in BFA, and you don't have to super crazy push yourself for that. You can also just focus on your one preferred playstyle if you have one. If you want to just raid, you go do that. Don't feel bad for not running a key each week because you will still get weekly loot in Shadowlands if all you do is raid, or just PvP, or just dungeon. The 15 dungeon reward is probably there to reward the chaps who make dungeons and mythic plus keys their personal endgame. There are a lot of players who love the dungeons and mythic plus system, but still don't really care for raiding. Getting 15 dungeons done for us might seem like a slog sometimes, but getting 15 done for them might actually just be how they play the game anyway. And then the last row of rewards is tied to PvP and earning Conquest. You get one piece for earning 100 Conquest, another for earning 150 Conquest, and the third and final reward comes from earning 250 Conquest. We have no idea how earning Conquest is really going to work right now, and earning 250 Conquest is on the same level as killing 10 raid bosses or finishing 15 dungeons. So I imagine it might actually take you a while to earn 250 Conquest, even though the numbers sound pretty low. Until we see more of the revamped PvP currency system, that one isn't going to make much sense, but just know that if you only want to PvP, you can also earn up to three choices in your weekly box of loot without touching any other form of content. So, up to 9 choices in your weekly box, completely mix and matchable by the looks of things, so you can focus on what you want to do and not feel bad if you don't get that one key run in every single week. But there is one pretty big question mark left over from this whole thing. How does the system decide what item level these pieces of gear will be? For the raids I imagine it will be pretty simple. If you kill three normal bosses, you get a normal piece of loot for that option. If you kill three heroic bosses, you get a heroic piece. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? But what if you kill three heroic bosses and four normal bosses? Technically, you killed seven bosses to trigger that second reward, but you didn't kill seven heroic bosses. So do you actually get one heroic piece and one normal piece from those two options? This might be the first time we see multiple item level rewards on offer at the same time, which really would not surprise me. Killing three mythic bosses and seven normal bosses shouldn't really trigger another mythic reward from the 10 boss objective, right? That would give you an incentive to push for more kills on higher difficulties, so you can get more options for better gear and loot if you need, for example, 10 mythic kills to get a mythic piece in all three slots from raiding. But then how do dungeons work? The first one for one key done is probably straightforward as well. That should reward you an item based on your highest completed key in the week. But what about five mythic dungeons? Running one plus 15 key and then four mythic zeros will trigger that reward, but should that be equivalent to your highest key that contributed or the lowest key that contributed, or maybe even an average. Wowhead actually found some additional data strings relating to the system, which suggests that the lowest key that contributes to the reward might actually dictate the item level of the reward. So if you do 4 plus 15 keys and 1 mythic 0, you might actually be rewarded at the mythic 0 level because the lowest key that contributed to the 5 mythic dungeon objective was a zero. You would have to do five plus 15 keys to get a plus 15 reward. Or if you do a mix of keys, say a plus 15, a plus 13, a plus 10, a plus 9, and a plus 6, because the lowest is a plus 6, you might be rewarded based on that. The same goes for the 15 Mythic Dungeon Clear section. You can just spam low keys to complete that row, but the third reward will not be based on your highest key by the looks of things, but your lowest key out of the 15. For PvP, the strings point to something different, your highest bracket win of the week. Because this works a bit differently, I imagine that all three PvP rewards will actually be the same item level every single time. Unlocking more gear is separate from how the item level is decided. You just need to earn Conquest to actually get the loot, but your highest rated win dictates the item level. So in that sense, PvP might be one of the easiest ways to gear up with the system and give you a lot of high item level choices providing you can climb to a high enough rank to get some of the good upgrades anyway. 
Something else to consider is that the dev team said that weekly rewards won't always just be gear. We could also see some cosmetic rewards come from the weekly vault, things like transmogs, appearance altering items, maybe even some mounts and pets. They could tie some of those into the harder reward unlocks maybe to make them a bit prestigious, so not only does that give you more motivation to unlock more rewards, but it gives you some different loot options to chase even after you gear yourself up to the best you can possibly be. And if all else fails, and your weekly box still cannot give you an upgrade, even with 9 choices on the table, the dev team have also said that they will include a major currency reward as a bit of a consolation prize. So even if every piece of gear is useless to you, or maybe you already have the mounts and pets if they pop up, you can choose to take the currency instead and still get at least some use out of your weekly box. One last thing I want to drive home is that even if you get to choose between 9 different options, or maybe 10 options with the currency included, you do only get to pick one. The weekly chest will not reward you with more gear when compared to BFA, but what it will do is give you more options to actually get an upgrade or reward that you are interested in to make sure the weekly chest is far, far less disappointing than it could have been in Battle for Azeroth. And you can now get a weekly box without even touching a Mythic Plus dungeon. That alone makes this a fantastic change in my opinion, and I can't wait to tick most of these objectives off every week in the pursuit of shiny loot. But what do you think of the new weekly reward system from what you've seen so far? Is 9 options for loot too many? Is 15 Mythic Plus dungeons going too far? Or do you think it's a good thing that we can pick and choose and work towards as many or as few of these weekly rewards as we want? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to explore the alpha or help us get ready for Shadowlands, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12pm PST, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now, and if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who subscribed on Twitch already and to our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well, now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.